How's practice today? Good, man. Solid. I heard uh, Kendrick Lamar in there. Is that what you guys listen to during the, man, during the very, practice? It varies different days, man. If Jimmy's on the ice, we listen to the country. <laughs> <laughs> is, is he usually in charge? Is Jimmy, if you don't mind. OG, too. OG will be in. OG's in charge, too. It just depends on who gets to it first. Sometimes Tyler, sometimes Bam. Do y'all, like, recognize the the songs that Haslam's playing? <laughs> Yeah, he plays some old school. Some of them I do, some of them I don't. But he uh, he play all the old cla- that, all the old classics. What about Nico? He probably doesn't. <laughs> nah, nah, Nico. He a rookie. No, no, no ox for, for what Nico. What music do you listen to? Do you guys know? Mm, I mean, they gotta have like Serbian rap. I'm sure. Or or maybe some Serbian country music. <laughs> he hasn't he hasn't played none for me yet. So I've heard. I gotta ask him what he listen to. I gotta... Um, going back to last night's game, what? Given how shorthanded you were, and that Spo basically used your entire whoever was available, the whole entire lineup, the entire rotation, uh, the manner with which you guys won was very different than the way you guys have won games. Yeah. What can you take away from a game like that, if anything? Mm. I mean, obviously, uh, we love to bow teams out and get guys out early, mm-hmm. um, but I think games like these, like these, are just setting us up for bigger games down the road. I mean, you don't. You definitely not want to be blowing teams out and then get towards the playoffs and then start to be in these crunch situations and having to play guys you haven't played in, in a long time and new guys are out there that haven't been in situations like that. Um, so I think that in that aspect is beneficial for us and I, uh, you know because we'd rather not be in a situation like that. But I think overall it'll be you know it'll help us um, be able to navigate those types of situations a lot smoother whenever uh, we we really need to. Obviously, it had been an uneven start for you guys. It took a long time to get back to 500. You guys are back at 500 now. Um, but I think you were 99 in your first 18 clutch games, and I think you're four and one in your last five clutch games. Yeah. Does it feel like something has changed in those last, you know, five minutes? Yeah, I definitely think that we're um, starting to figure it out, starting to click and gel uh, with certain lineups and certain rotations, and uh, I just think that we're overall just. St- starting to trust each other more and believe in each other and um we're starting to feel it the energy is different and um it just sucks when you're losing so you know uh, i think we've changed our approach and i think we're just getting better every every game and like you were saying just being in situations like that and seeing what guys can contribute to what and um seeing guys make big plays and seeing young guys come up and play well and um, guys who typically don't get a lot of minutes step up and play minutes and contribute. I think that's been big for everybody. So I think it's just a, been a big confidence booster the last couple of weeks. When you say you changed your approach, what specifically are you talking about there? I think that uh, we're taking more pride in starting third quarters better. Um, that's been a big thing for this past season is getting a lead, 10 point, 10 plus lead, a double digit lead, and blowing, you know, and um, basically tricking it off in a couple minutes into the third. You know what I mean? I, this, I think that we've taken more pride in trying to handle that. And sometimes it's going to happen just because guys are going to go on runs, opponents are going to go on runs. And I think we've been learning how to um, operate and kind of put out the fire a little bit better right now. We're still we're still getting better at it. We still There's still times where, um, where we're still trying to learn how to do that. But I think overall we're getting better at that. And um, I just think that it's just starting to contribute to, to more winning and more confidence. Does it feel like maybe earlier in the season, the first 20, 25 games, there might have been a little bit of a hangover based on just the emotional way that last season ended? Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, uh, games like that always stick with you. And, you know, we got a lot of competitors, and, you know, you sit on that for a while. You know, you dwell on that. And uh, that's, I feel like that's all you can think about. And that was my first experience in the NBA going like that, and I still think about it all the time. But yeah. um it's just a lot, with a lot of other things, if you just sit there and, and keep dwelling on that, you're not really going to be able to take take care of the stuff that's in front of you. So um, and I also think that's what I mean by approach, too. I think we're kind of letting go of what happened and just starting to, you know, come into our own right now and, and be present and figure out how to win these games and, and, and play with each other. And it's just becoming a lot more fun. You know what I mean? I think everybody's having a – a lot more fun playing. We're starting things. The clarity's coming to the team. Clarity's coming to the rotation. Clarity's coming to roles, and guys are just getting better. And guys are learning how to how to star in their role, and um, it's only going to keep getting better. What are some of? The, I mean, there's a lot of frustration around the team given the way that way the things have started. And you guys, have, I'm sure, have been frustrated. But what are some of the things that you like? Some of the reasons for optimism that you guys have internally? Hmm. I just think it's just just seeing. Uh, Guys, step up, man. I just I see 
especially from a guy like me from last year coming off two way and um and just how I how I came through last season I just it's it's very um satisfying to see guys step up guys like H um you know Haywood um the young fella um Nico and uh you see now um, you got Orlando playing really well. You got guys stepping up, and the guys are playing really well. You got other guys in the back like Kane, and those guys are hungry, and they're ready, and they're coming in to prove themselves every day. I just think that um, it's cool to see guys go in there and contribute in a small amount of minutes and uh, accept the guys accepting their roles. And um, It's fun, man. It's, it's it's just really dope to see, like especially from a guy like me, seeing that first, being going through that firsthand. So it's, um, I think with just doing stuff like that, you see Vic coming back and starting to get his groove back a little bit and you know guys are just starting to, to play and confidence start to grow so it's been that's been big for us and for you specifically you know i know you played a little bit of four last year but you're in a lot of different positions you're asked to start at the four this year i know you've talked a lot about it but now that it's been whatever 30 something games it kind of feels like at least from my perspective that you sort of figured out how you want to approach that position the yeah. style with which you want to play the four had that been a challenge for you just trying to Almost figure yeah. out. Okay, how do I want to play this <laughs> spot? Nah, uh, definitely. Uh, I, it was tough for me for a while, uh, just trying to figure it out mentally, uh, being torn between you know being a wing mm -hmm. and you know being a four, and implementing some of the things I have to do with the four uh, more often than not than I would being a wing. And so, you know, not running the floor wide as much and getting transition buckets, but getting the screen and rolls and getting guys open and setting picks and. Uh, being more of a decoy and put myself in a better position to rebound and instead of being able to crash from the perimeter. It's just it's been a different style and different mm -hmm. look and it's kinda of getting the ball in different areas and different spots. It was tough for a little while. Um, but I think you know, the best thing I did was just accept it and I think it got easier as I accepted it more and understood that's what we needed as a team and we were lacking that and, you know, I could provide that and, you know, uh you know, so I just and I also think I'm just vers I was versatile enough to play it. So, mm -hmm. and I wanted to take pride in taking that challenge. Um, so I think I've just been doing a better job at that, and it's just been way more fluent. The more I've just embraced that role and and started figuring it out. And, I, and obviously, I have guys that's been teaching me and with on the coaching staff, but my but my teammates have been helping me. OG has been helping me a ton, put me in. Uh, you know, because he played a small ball four when he was playing too. So he just put me in, in a lot of great positions and gave me a lot of great insight on things that he did and what made him successful. And I just think that I've just been feeding off guys, and um, it's just been a lot easier the more I, the more I uh, hash things out with them. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it kind of felt like earlier in the year you were trying to do like a PJ Tucker impression a little bit. Yeah, you, know, you were placed in those similar sets. You were sort of parked in the corner, mm -hmm. and now that you've sort of figured out your rhythm you found more sort of pockets in the game to let the, the Caleb Martin stuff that we saw last year come yeah. out in terms of jumping those passing lanes, getting those steals and transition and all that kind of – am I full of it or yeah. do you, does that make sense? No, no, it definitely makes sense. I, I think that's exactly what's happening. I think that uh, when I finally started to learn how to play that spot and what positions I'm in, then I was able to sprinkle in myself, mm -hmm. you know, like you right. said, getting passing, lane, getting passing lanes and getting to transition a little bit and – you know, know how to put myself in position to get a to get a big close now on me to to get downhill to get a dunk or, um, you know, get myself in certain areas to shoot threes. And I just think the more I did that, and and I just think I was just thinking less. I think I was trying to figure it out so much. I was overthinking everything. I was second guessing things, and I uh, wasn't really being confident in in my skill, and I just wasn't being aggressive. And so I'm never my best when I'm passive. And I don't think that helps me, or I don't I don't think it helps my team either when I'm doing that. So once I got all that mentally together and uh, just understood that it's it's still basketball, I still, you know, there's things I need to know technically, but overall I'm just hooping. I think once I just became way more uh, relaxed and just played, um, it just it, it started all coming to me a lot, a lot slower. So, Do opponents know that – You've been on the scouting report for a couple of years now, but do opponents still know that you can dunk the way that you man. can dunk and surprise <laughs> people sometimes? Man, I think it still surprises people, man. I don't, I don't know. I just – if if they don't know I can dunk or, you know, I'm probably going to go dunk if I'm within a couple steps, like, 
they just they probably not looking at the scouting <laughs> report. I don't know. Even if they don't know me, I mean. Have you gotten the business decision defender yet? Where they're just like, you know what? I see him coming downhill. I'm gonna just go this way. Uh, yeah. I, sometimes I feel like yes, yesterday was the first time in a while I didn't. Somebody yeah. went up and blocked it, but I'm coming off my <laughs> ankle, so I'm gonna get him next time. <laughs> next, but time. next time I'm gonna get him. I'm a little slow on my ankle right now, but uh, but nah. Sometimes I, you definitely tell some guys that they don't wanna. That just that just lets you down. I want to be on the poster, but <laughs> <laughs> um, the starting lineup, the projected starting lineup, hasn't played a whole lot together. But when it has, in the minutes that you guys have played together, the numbers have been really good. The net rating is awesome. Like, what's clicking with that group when you do have it together? Man, uh, I don't know, bro. I, I think that we're just such a versatile lineup. Like, um, you know, you got Jimmy that can, you know, Jimmy's going to be Jimmy always, and you got Tyler that's in there that can. They can get a bug, I think. And what's made it a lot better, too, is, you know, Tyler's really upped his defensive um, capabilities, man. Like, he's really been defending. And, mm -hmm. like, that's one thing I've noticed this year, that he's really been playing both sides of the ball. And that's been really impressive at the rate that he scores and the, the amount of uh, usage he gets offensively is tough, man. Like, anybody can – that's why Jimmy's such a great player because he does both. Mm -hmm. And now you're starting to see that, and, and Tyler's starting to be able to do that, and you know, and you're not worried about him on the weak side and having to over help. And you know, you're, I really feel like when he's defending guys, he's he's good. You know what I mean? Um, so uh, that's been a that's been a huge help. And um, Bam's really coming into his own, learning how to score spots, get get the spots, um, score the ball. He's being way more aggressive, which has been helpful for us. And um, and with me, I think like as I was learning my um, Learning the four position and just knowing my, and knowing how to get to my spots and and learning when and when not to do things and just being aggressive while I'm doing it. Um, I just think overall it became a lot easier for you know and then Kyle putting us putting us in position man. Yeah. Kyle's just always been a great doing a great job of putting us in position and picking up the pace and just being ten steps ahead of things. He's so such a smart basketball player. So. Um, I think everybody's just been clicking, and we love that. You know, we love playing with each other, and I think I think we feed off each other really well. So, on a night like last night, where Tyler, everybody's got bad shooting nights. It was not a great one for him. Mm -hmm. he missed his first eight threes, and then the one in the corner. They ended up rolling it at two, but it's yeah. basically a three. Yeah. When you hit something <laughs> like that, do you just shake your head and you're just like, man? It just, it just, it just shows you like the confidence, man. Like. He's he's so like you said you can miss your first eight threes he hit one in the corner you're gonna feel like he ate, hit eight threes so <laughs> that's just like that's why guys like him are um, are always gonna be good because just mentally brother just you can't tell him otherwise it doesn't matter and um, and especially when he knows that he's got his team behind him and the guys he's on the floor with that believe in him to take those shots no matter if he misses eight or just made eight mm -hmm. man you can't tell him nothing so it's uh. It's only beneficial to us, man. Like when he, whenever he plays like that, and he's that aggressive, and he's just a, he's a tough shot maker. And you know, I'm never surprised. I'm like, I like I look at it great, but I'm never surprised when he makes it because he, you know, that's that's just what he does. That's his job. That's what he do. But uh, sometimes it, do, it does catch you a little off guard. <laughs> there was uh the TV cameras caught him with a celebration, putting both fists together. Yeah. Do you know what that is? Because a bunch of you, got, you guys were laughing. I don't know if you were laughing on the sideline, but a bunch of people were laughing at it and kind of doing it with him. Yeah, I think uh, I can't remember. Uh, I know which one you're talking about, but I don't know. I don't know if I can say it because I don't want to give off any inside information. I don't know why. I think it might have been like a. What they gonna, it might have been like a. Uh, I don't know. I don't really know what it was. <laughs> Really it was more of a strategy thing. Or yeah, yeah, I think I think it was like more strategy. Oh, I, think I, it was more strategy. I, I thought it was something to do with like his. But he probably made it. But he made it personal, probably. Okay. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> um, and then uh, in terms of Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Butler, um, he sounded frustrated a couple nights ago having to deal with the injuries, and it's just one thing after another. The knee, yeah, the the non-COVID illness, the stomach thing, the and then and now the ankle. I mean. What's his mood been like in the locker room with you guys? Can you see that frustration kind of simmering with him? Yeah, uh, I mean, you, you definitely know he's frustrated just because he wants to play. He's a competitor, and he, you know, he wants to get out there and play. He don't want to, you know, come to games and sit out. Um, he wants to compete. He wants to win. So obviously, that's eating at him whenever he can't do that, and um, especially whenever it's not really his choice. He just there's just nothing he can do about it sometimes, and. Uh, we all have we all go through those battles, but you know he's been a great teammate. You don't feel anything 
like he's super frustrated or mm-hmm. anything like that. You know, he's going to come be a professional. He's going to come be a leader and come talk to guys, come help us win in, in a different way. So um, it's definitely frustrating, you can tell. But um, he does a great job, and he's, you know, those guys and the, uh, the medical staff are going to get him back as quick as possible. And um, he also understands that also just, you know, he, he believes in us to, to get the job done, whether he's playing or not. Same thing, we know with Bam was out last night, guys got to step up. And, uh, that's what it's all about. That's what the league is about. That's how you get your opportunity with the young guys. And, um, you know, so it's obviously it sucks for us because we always wanted to play. We wanted to play 82 plus, but um, so that's just sometimes not, you know, just not the case. So uh, it's, it's it's bad, but then it's, it's, you find good in it too. So, Did you guys make fun of him at all about the cricket thing? About the cricket? <laughs> I ate a cricket with him. I'm not going to lie. You ate yeah, a cricket I tried, with him? I tried, I tried one, yeah. And so I then you, and you, you didn't have the stomach issues that, 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 kept you out of game hey half a cricket so how many crickets did he eat? i don't know oh i right, see <laughs> did you feel more, like more than more, more than me he probably met more he probably <laughs> ate more than me if he had you know if he had stomach pains from that he probably had more than me um <laughs> and uh what's the, what's the what's the bulletin board material with this group right now what's sort of the is it outside noise that you guys are hearing? Is it anything like what's kind of? Is there anything that you guys are taking from the outside, bringing it in, and using it as motivation? Mm, I don't really think we. I don't think we really listen too much of the mm-hmm. outside stuff. I think we just kind of hold ourselves to a high, you know to a certain standard and expect a, expect us to play and perform at a certain level on a nightly basis. So like it's, it's gonna it's definitely more internal than anything. I just think that you know guys are you know powerful and and we want to. You know, we take pride in being in a certain position um, as of, you know, right now, especially, you know, with our record doesn't show what type of team we are, what type of talent we actually have and the chemistry we have. And um, I think we've, you know, kind of got away from that. So I think it's not – we don't really even need the, the outside noise for motivation. I just think that um, we – you know, the fact that we hold ourselves to a, to a higher standard, we're not performing at that right now is, is more than enough. And, uh, you know – we got to, you know, we got to get to a point where, you know, we draw a line in the sand and be like, all right, this this is what we figured out and we, we go up from here, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, in some games, most games are going to be harder, you know, harder than, uh, you know, maybe it might be harder for us than other teams just because we're trying to figure things out. We're going through injury. We haven't played a lot of games uh, with a starting lineup together. So there's a lot of things that we're fighting, but there's a lot of things that other teams are fighting as well. So we're not the only team in the league that's going through it. You know, we just got to get to a place where you get tired of losing, you get tired of playing bad, and you just figure out a way to play well, regar- like said, regardless. Sorry, but like, like you said before, if it's starting to feel like you're you're getting to that point. Mm-hmm. No, nah, definitely. Uh, that's why I just feel like there's just a better energy. You know, it's always better when you're winning and you're yeah. playing well and guys are shooting the ball well. And, um, you know, I think last night was, you know, with two two of our biggest guys that were out of the game, we still figure out a way to win. And we've got more than enough. To, to pull these games out, and especially when guys, especially when we're, you know, full strength. Um, so it just sheds light on what we could be doing. So we just got to figure out how to tap into that every game and make sure that's the outcome. So. Perfect. Thanks, Dale. Oh, no, appreciate it. Appreciate it.